Hey there, StarCraft fans! It's Falk Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft 2, A Legacy of the Void, and another Beast of the Hill! This map is named Goat Puncher's Gaudy Gardens. <laughs> and it's going to be an 8 player free for all and a UMS map. So, first, we've got Captain Canuck, a Red Terran player next door. We've got a, I don't know, Dark Ray Protoss player. It is Clear. We also have a purple Terran named Reality, uh, another Protoss player named Zaunfan. Okay, Zaun the Protoss player from Korea. We've got a yellow Terran that is Slam Dunk. You switched off, traitor, says Reality. I'm not sure what we're talking about here. We've got Nickel BD, who is a green Protoss, also a pink Protoss named Templar. Are there any Zergs at all? Zero Zerg representation here, man. Shiny. Who is an orange Protoss player? Alpha X spinning logos on some of these players. Command centers. Do we have APMs? Yeah. Reality here, or Captain Canuck rather, has some pretty high spammy APM. Uh, as does our guy Templar. As does our guy Clear. So that's Alpha X, right? Am I? I'm, I'm not great at this. I'm not great at recognizing clan logos. I'm bad. Here, I'm gonna pull it up real quick. Last game I was on 20 FPS. Says Clear. <laughs> Uh, no, I don't want to search Aloha, Google. Come on. Alpha X StarCraft 2. Yep, that's the Alpha X logo. Yeah, I win! <clears throat> so this is Beast of the Hill! For those of you that don't know, here are the rules, right? Is there a way to pull those up? I don't remember. So if you are sitting your unit on the red circle here in the middle, this is what matters in King Beast of the Hill, okay? You get extra income for doing this, for sitting your worker here, all right? And every five minutes, whoever controls this circle gets a point. The first person to three points wins. So right here we have our score total. We don't see it when we're looking at everybody. But uh, we will see it when we look at somebody's specific camera, okay? So the way this works is basically ground units that you can see have priority. So if there's one probe here and 87 carriers from somebody else, the probe gets the point when the timer runs out on that instant, okay? Uh, the hierarchy goes like invisible units are not as high on the list as ground units are. Air units are not as high on the list as invisible units are. Invisible flying stuff is also pretty low. So we'll basically it usually comes down to like a marauder was on the circle, right? And if somebody else, right? If there's a probe here for shiny and a probe here for someone else, like for reality, then yeah, whoever holds, uh, whoever is the last one standing gets the point. So Canuck's got two SEVs here. Slam Dunk brings a... Is gonna... What? He's putting a planetary fortress down here in the middle. Okay, I love this a lot. He's from the Hyper One clan. Again, Hyper One sent me this replay as part of a Patreon thing that he does for me uh, every month. And man, fantastic. Like, these are always very, very fun. Beast of the Hill is hilarious. Should be good. So yeah, Canuck's holding it now. He's getting extra income. Reality tries to come in and, you know, shove him away. Kitty 8 charge, dodged. This planetary... Okay, that's hilarious. Goodbye. Planetary can reach stuff on the, this edge, but I don't think he can reach into the middle of the circle. Really should have planted it down closer. Templar thinks this is very funny. Uh, what's he got? Probe running into his base and he's... Whatever, I don't know why that's funny. But yo, Slam Dunk's trying to get some bunkers up here. He's got a Marine to fight. Oh, and then a Stalker comes in from Shiny. He doesn't know what to attack, but he's going to hold the middle for now. Pick off the Marine. Pick off the SCV. Building the bunker. No bunkers for you, Slam Dunk. And then the bunker itself is getting shot at, too. So one minute to go. One minute. Shiny's building a proxy gateway over here. So that's the thing. You can be aggressive and get points early, but then if someone else is macroing up, they can sometimes roll you for those, you know, for the rest of the game. And suddenly you got one point early, but then your economy is so far behind on the other side that you never get another point again. And sometimes that's what happens. So this is going to be Stalker Micro versus Stalker Micro here. Nobody's got Blink yet, but they're working on it. Actually, Templar just almost has his Blink. It's so close. There it is. He's got his Blink, but now he's outnumbered. So Shiny's now holding. 30 seconds. Bunker finishes. That's massive. Get inside the bunker. Yo, Bunker. Is the Bunker... <laughs> Marines like I'm on the circle. Blah, dead. Blah. And 20 seconds to go. No one's on the circle. Shiny. You know, it's really tempting to be like, I know who's gonna win with 20 seconds to go, but you don't. Crazy stuff happens in these last 10 seconds. Meanwhile, Zoundfan is um 
There's Widow Mines getting dropped here by Reality, but five. Bam, point. Slam Dunk gets it with his Marines and SCVs on the circle. Slam Dunk gets a point. He also oh, got a tank out here. This Planetary is having a good time with two total kills. Amazing. Amazing stuff. Meanwhile, Zound fans over at Clear's base. Adept harassing his Nexus. Maybe go after some of the probes? I don't know, man. Clear's going to kill your Adepts anyway. It doesn't really matter at this point. It's too late. Slam Dunk laughs hilariously. Siege tank. Oh, behind the planetary. Can hit anything inside the circle. The circle is pockmarked with siege tank fire now. It does wear off because, I don't know, that's how this game works as damage wears off. Stuff on the ground, like blood and explosions and stuff. And debris. Canuck throws down a mule in there and says, Oh, there's a siege tank covering the circle. Great. <laughs> oh, this is so good. Carrier's already on the way here from our green Protoss guy. Uh, Nickel Bede. Yep, that's why I didn't remember his name. Nickel Bede. Yeah, look at that. You could see, see the triangles covering the entire circle. So, I mean, it's fun and everything, but if somebody shows up with like 20 stalkers and dumps them in the middle, then yeah, your tank can't kill them all. Then the timer runs out, and whoop de doo You did it. Also, Slam Dunk throws a Widow Mine in the middle, just for extra chaos. That's what we're all about here, is extra, extra chaos. Dude, three bases rolling from Shiny here. Three bases from Captain Canuck. He's got this Minerals base. There's a little high ground that people can perch tanks on and ruin your day. Even just some stalkers up there would, like, be horrible for... Any SCV trying to mine here, but they're going for gas instead. The high Rich Vespine gas is a more... More of a priority here. Battle cruisers on the way from our dude Captain Canuck. He's getting high sec auto tracking as well. Next round, two minutes, two oh five. I mean, just this is so fun, so fun. This is Beast of the Hill. Really, really entertaining stuff. Already, I mean, seriously, that first point was very hard fought and well contested, as these usually are. Slam Dunk trying to expand to a r r minerals only base. So you can go mineral, you can, sorry, not minerals only, but gold minerals. Gold minerals with rich Vespine geysers. You want that, you got to get the high ground position where you have to worry about people sitting up here and ruining your day. So that's the risk here. We've got a PvP that's happening in the top left corner between Templar and Shiny. I don't think anybody has the upper hand here, honestly, at all. So that's good. You know, they're just trying to expand and stuff. It's fine. Reality's got a bunch of Marines out. The Vikings of Clear are not okay with that. All of a sudden, Clear's trying to expand here. Not happening. One minute, ten seconds to go for the next point, and this has been very quiet. Siege tanks, planetary widow mine, done. Got it shut down. Got it on lockdown, says Slam Dunk. He's long distance mining to that planetary. Might as well at this stage of the game. Why not? Again, battle cruisers can hold the circle, but only if there's nothing on the ground. You have to kill everything. So the priority here, it's just it's to encourage people not just to make giant carrier or battle cruiser armies, right? Because if you do that, yeah, in a lot of free-for-alls you'll win, but not in this one. Not necessarily. Shiny's got himself a nice stalker army over here with a couple of mortals. I think he's just going to jump on it and be like, take the tank fire, take the damage. But if I'm sitting on this thing, I win. Because these above-ground units are prioritized over the burrowed widow mine. This engagement over here. Siege Tank wants to kill that Colossus. It's dead now, though. Pretty good micro. It goes up the ramp. Oh, the Colossus gets shield battery overcharge. Shield 11 kills on that guy. Nice. And here it is, man. The chaos of three seconds. Two, one, and bam. Shiny gets it. His stalkers are on the circle. Like I said, he's going to take the tank fire, lose a few stalkers, take some damage, get the point. Done. Beautifully done there by Shiny. Like, excellent, excellent play by him. Oh. Yeah, this is... <laughs> this is so good. Oh, my gosh. Okay, so Slam Dunk's like, dang it. I had a plan, but then like a million stalkers showed up and ruined his day, right?
Bit of an attack over here on Templar's base. Shiny trying to wipe it out with his orange clan. And then Shiny's like, Templar's like, hey, what are you trying to do here? Meanwhile, this little PVT on the right side has been pretty fun. Got charge lots now and three Colossus. So reality's like, I'm out. Peace. Totally out here. Also, Shiny's warping in charge lots into Templar's base. So Templar's going to lose his third, which is really bad news. Yeah, so that Nexus goes down. There's Disruptors from Shiny wandering in in case Templar gets too close. Ooh, Disruptor shots on those ten... Oh, the... Yeah, two! Two Immortals down for the price of one. We've got sub one minute to go now on the dot. So maybe the aggression will be over. Maybe we come back to the circle. It's time to return to the high ground and cause all sorts of problems. And then, oh, Templar had another base down here, and he's got another base here. So Templar's been a very uh, macro-oriented boy here. Soundfan says, all right, this little stranglehold that Slam Dunk has set up has got to go. Does it? No. It's on high ground, too, which totally sucks for anyone trying to engage with that thing. Man, alive. All right, so here we go. Ten seconds, holding it. Shiny versus Zown here, basically. Zown fan, I think we might actually have our first non-instant winner with both players having ground units. There we go. Both players have ground units on. The point is contested. It's basically Shiny versus Zown fan, and bam, Shiny gets the point. He shoves Zown fan off just enough, just barely enough. Clear says, "I love one FPS gaming." <laughs> The nice thing about having a 3080 in the Falcon Paladin home is that I can handle chaos like that, and it's not too bad. Alright, so if we look at overall... Oh, the Battlecruiser fleet of Canuck is here. Uh, Shiny is going to lose an entire Nexus. That's bad time. Shiny's like, ah, not good. Also, Captain Canuck's going to lose a planetary to Zhaun Fan as he takes his frustrations out. Azura, I'm killing Shiny. Please stop. Oh, well. <laughs> I think this is Azura. That's a noble cause, says Azura. Also known as a Zhaun Fan. Canuck, says Shiny, please. Can we be friends, says Shiny. Ah! The free-for-all offer of friends here. I'll kill Azura. Says <laughs> Shiny. <laughs> what a play from him. Yeah. I mean, Shiny's getting riggedy wrecked by these battle cruisers, man. He's got a bunch of stalkers. He just doesn't have enough to handle this many BCs. It's like, who does? How many stalkers does it take to handle that many BCs? A lot. The carriers of Zone Fan are out. Shiny's dying all over the place here. Dude, nikki has got a bajillion carriers. Uh, yeah, Canuck Fan's maxed out. Uh, 195 supply here as well for Zhaun Fan, and 200 total supply also for Clear. What, really? No, that can't be accurate. Apparently it is. I don't know, man. Yeah, Shiny looking good, man. He's got two points already. But also dying. Pretty horribly. He's like, all right, look, I got this army is what I've got for center. Nikki is getting the extra income here by sitting the carriers and void rays over the red circle. And there is an observer with this army, right? Because a DT could sneak in here and hold it and get the point because it's on the ground. And yes, it's cloaked, but ground cloaked has higher priority than flying types. It's like Pokemon, kind of. In that way. I don't know, man. I don't know. It's 11.30 p.m. Sometimes I don't make sense when I cast in the late nights. I should do mercy by not killing you, but all right, says Shiny. Nuke time. Oh, the middle. Nuke on the middle. Dude, Kanuk. Oh, my gosh. 
It's the new mule strat! Captain who cannot get support. <laughs> Shiny taps out. <laughs> Battle cruisers of Canuck ruined him. First time we saw that strat, I think Hyper One did it on the channel. Maybe again, I don't know if it's his strategy, but it was amazing. You nuke whatever's on there, and then you time it so the mules land right after the nukes dissipate. And then the mules count as ground units, highest priority. Bam, point yours. Terran's good stuff, man. Reality taps out. He's got Colossus ruining his day. So, yo. Reality's gone. That's the Alpha X clan tag, right? Yeah. Oh, Nikki taps out after losing all of those carriers. <laughs> so we've got three people who've tapped here today. Which leaves us five for this eight-player free-for-all. Ooh, I cast a game on a ten-player free-for-all map the other day. Where everybody had Rich Vespin gas geysers in their base and gold minerals. Like, the whole map was that. It was crazy. It was basically a fastest map in StarCraft 2, but not exactly. Anyway, Captain Canuck's getting Zealot run by... Oh, Battlecruisers jumped right on in. That's what we're talking about. So yeah, Shiny got two points and tapped out because Battlecruisers destroyed him. Wow. So Sky Tossing it still. Here's our guy, Zound Fan. I've heard it said that the name is pronounced Jean. You know, if you actually try to say it the Korean way, but like, I don't know, man. Tesosis calls him Zown, because that's how it looks in English, but he's not. English, so... Eh. But if I call him Joan, then everybody who knows him as Zown are like, who are you talking about? It's tricky. Yamato's! Yamato's doing yamato -y things. That's what we're talking about here. All the yamato -y things. I hate 1FPs, says Clear. What's 1FP? One, what's one Battlecruisers? I don't know either way. He's tapped out, man. Done. Dunzo. Nobody's holding circle. Nobody's decided to, like, put a ghost on there, Captain Canuck. Get some extra income. Not that you really need it. I guess this space is getting reestablished. Slam Dunk comes in. Oh, he tosses the horde symbol in the middle. Because there's already horde symbols on the outside. Uh, I, the creator of the map is apparently a horde fan from World of Warcraft. Oh, here we go. Here comes the nuke strategy again. Kill the ghosts. Oh, and the battle cruisers come in, though, so the new... Okay, all right. Canuck, man, that's two points. That's two points. So the nukes land, and... No! Canuck got it. I thought the... S oh. oh, I thought the stalkers would get it there, but, man, Canuck gets the second point. Two out of the available three that he needs. Zone Fan and Slam Dunk are not participating in that round. They are trying to murder each other right now. Slam Dunk says, I got a lot of Marines. Do they potentially have upgrades, Senor Marine here? Uh, they've got 3-3. Three, three. Yeah, they're great. They're doing fine. Thank you. Missile turrets on the Void Rays. Not bad, especially if the Void Rays forget they have Prismatic Alignment, which maybe it's on cooldown. It's not. Okay, fine. Whatever. Who needs Prismatic Alignment? You're just wrecking through here, laying waste to all before you anyway, Mr. Zone Fan. Yeah, more nukes on the way from Captain Canuck. It's four people remaining. The leaderboard is as follows. Canuck's got one slam dunk, or two. Canuck's, slam dunk's got one. Nobody else has anything, because Shiny's dead. No one else has anything else. Okay. But uh, slam dunk's kind of getting, yeah. He's just getting destroyed right now by Sky Toss, because of course he is. Because Sky Toss is a good unit. In, again, in games like these. But again, the point is not to kill everyone. Actually, it is. <laughs> it turns out another way you can win this without even getting three points is kill everybody else. So, you know, maybe Sky Toss players go try to wreck Captain Canuck, but he's got a million battle cruisers with the Brood War skin on them. You can tell because they've got the skinny necks. Skinny neck battle cruiser. Ah, Brood War style. I do cast Brood War if you guys are, you know, if anybody here doesn't know that I also cast Brood War, first of all, welcome to the channel. But just youtube.com slash falcon paladin is my brood war channel. All right. This army of Templars is like, no, run. Oh, this is not even awesome. 3-3 three, three upgrades on those BCs. It's 3-1-3 three, three upgrades for the Templar. 3-1-3 uh, 
three one upgrades here. Void Ray's not bad, but Yamato's are just ruining everything. Yes, better upgrades for the battle cruisers. Yamato really helps in these situations too. I don't think he's even targeting carriers directly. He's just murdering interceptors. Fair. Fair enough. Yeah. Calling down some mules for repair purposes, I guess. What do we got? Nope, 30 seconds. Right on the nose. Slime Dunk's like, okay, can we do this? We've got some Thors. We have some SCVs, I suppose. Uh, we do have income, which is wonderful. I don't think... Templar can do this. He's not even killing the mothership. He's just like, whatever, 10 seconds. Nah, coming in from the south is our guy Slam Dunk. It's contested. I think it's contested. Yes, it is. And he's gonna, he's trying to just mash his way in here. Is our guy Templar. Can he do it? Yo, Templar wins the point. With a stalker, he wins that battle. <gasps> he's got one point out of the three that he needs, and he's like, that was a lot of work for one point. Three, two, three upgrades for him. That's what I like about the Servant Ob's interface. I think I got this off of Team Liquid, like, boy, six or seven years ago now. And it's what I used to cast with, like, all the time was the Servant Ob's, because it's got the bigger mini-map, which I liked. It's nice and wide open, but... It's missing a lot of the information that, like, the WCS 3.0 Observer interface has that you guys are more used to, right? So, that's why I use that for most stuff. But if it's a free-for-all or, like, a team game with uneven teams, like a 3v4 or something, then the regular WCS interface doesn't support it. So, I go back to Servant Obs. And it's nice. It's nice and nostalgic here. Our yellow dude, Slam Dunk, is maybe going for... He's trying to go for battle cruisers. He doesn't have a lot of money. He's sort of mining down here, I guess. But yeah, Canuck just needs one more. He's sacking some SCVs to free up supply. Because maxed out is maxed out. Now he's at 194, which is great. 130 left. A little bit too early to start making your move here, but Captain Canuck's bringing a ghost over. A handful of ghosts over because this strategy requires more than one nuke. You got to have enough nukes to wipe out whatever sky toss exists here, you know? Woo! <laughs> Templar's warping in an excess up in the top left, and uh, I think Canuck wants to land a command center there, so I'm not sure that's happening. But, alright, Templar, the Protoss is trying to hold this thing. Really trying hard. Oh, Zone Phone tries to wander in. It doesn't go well for him, like, at all. I guess someone's trying to throw a barracks up over this location. Doesn't seem like it's going to be long lived. Oh, we're just floating barracks in. Do barracks count for the circle? I don't think they're on the hierarchy list, is the problem. No. No, I'm pretty sure they're not. Yamatos! Oh, taking some Tempest hits, though. Canuck backing out. 20 seconds to go, getting a little bit tight here. Additionally, there was some kind of a battle up there. I don't know what it was. Nuke time, with 10 seconds to go. Just straight up battle, and I just think Captain Canuck's got this thing. And even if, yeah. So he's gonna nuke his own BC. No! Templar gets the point! Whoa! Whoa! Did the nuke. Did he focus down the ghosts and underneath all those battle cruisers? That's insane! And a jump out. First time today. That's a jump out of danger for Captain Canuck. Dude! And then, yeah, you can counterattack at this point. Dude, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's what happened. I'm pretty sure that our guy here, Templar, killed the ghosts under the BC so the nukes didn't land. Oh, and that ruins the whole strategy for Captain Canuck. That's amazing. Zound fan's like, I don't, I'm not getting points here today, but hey, screw it.
Dude, Captain Canuck's kind of getting squeezed a little bit here. I mean, this base is really important to him for that reason as well as this one. He's not really mining from it, though. Does he have a bunch of money? Uh, where is the total monies that someone has? Here. About 3,000 minerals and 200 gas. It's not enough. I would say battle cruisers are just face smashing. That's what they do. They can attack while moving. They're pretty tanky. Their range isn't super hot. So the closer they get to you to hug you, the better it is for them. And the worse it is for you, the Tempest, though, big chunks of HP. And sniping a battle cruiser from across a football field there. American football or international football, whichever you like. The point stands. Football fields are big. <laughs> Uh, slam Dunk's holding a Thor on the center with a full minute 20 to go. It's just a dead Thor. Uh, he's just... He's... Oh, he's leaving. Never mind. He's a live Thor. He's an alive Thor. Army value... Let's see. 145, 199, 161, 137 for Captain Kanak. A full 200. Oh, boy. Templar's got a lot of stuff all of a sudden. He's got a lot of bases. He's warping in more. He's got 1,500 minerals and 1,900 gas in the bank, so, like, not killing it that way. Is Canuck going for another ghost strat? Or is he like, oh, yeah, he he's got a cloaked ghost running in. Two cloaked ghosts running in. Possibly a third one if I had to guess. There'd be one there. Thor's technically the answer to carriers and Tempest and stuff, but I don't know. Tempest range is pretty insane, too. Thor anti-range is great. 20 seconds! 20 seconds to go. Here come the nukes. But the ghosts are dying here. I don't... Wow. Everybody converging! Somebody's getting one FPS here. I don't even know who's sitting here. Liberator circles get tossed down. Canuck dies. And that's it. The point goes to Templar. Wait, 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 wait. Templar would come from behind, man, with an immortal. He had an um, 10 seconds, and then the chaos begins. The nukes come in for Captain Canuck, but they're late. I think they're late. That's it right there. Oh, my gosh. So in amongst all of this, the mules haven't come out of their pods yet. So the immortals are the only ground things on the circle. <laughs> Look at them surviving in here, too. Look at them. Look at them surviving. Oh, this is so beautiful. It's just, that's amazing. So GG, man. Our guy Templar comes through getting three points. I think, did Canuck have two when Templar had zero? Incredible come from behind victory from Templar regardless. But yeah, I mean, it turns out when you have like the entire map, did I lose the mini map because the game's over? Uh, did I lose the mini map because I got rid of the mini map on purpose? Yes. But yeah, look at all this pink. Look at how big his quadrant of the map is and how many bases he holds. And everybody else is like, you know, little corners, little corners, and his is expansive. That's a big part of why he won this thing. Plus the three, three, three upgrade to the ground and the oh wait, air armor's only plus two. Mothership's hilarious. Uh, just blah. Good stuff. You know, yeah. You know, I was wondering if you know it's just going to be Terran nuke mule strats to get the victory here again today. But you know what? It looks. It looks like it's doable. It looks like it's potentially, you know, it's beatable. <laughs> is the st uh, is the strat? Holy cow! What an absolutely great, great game. I love Beast of the Hill. It's a ton of fun. Thanks for sending these in, Hyper One. And yeah, end of the game there, dude. Shiny had to, but he tapped out. Kanak was still in it, but he couldn't get that final point. And Templar dead. Templar dead. Nothing from Zound Fan. Rough, rough day for Azura. I think that's what the name was there, but GG, man. Way to go, Templar. Way to macro. Way to get upgrades. Way to battle. Way to micro in a 5 FPS environment, which is not easy to do. And get the win. All right, cool. 
So that was going to be it from me. This has been Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft II, A Legacy of the Void and A Beast of the Hill. Go ahead. Hit that like button if you like what you saw and what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and Twitch, all at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching, and you take care of yourself.